We're joined now by CBS News contributor Ibram X. Kendi. He's founding director of the Anti-Racist Research and Policy Center at American University. Ibram is also the creator of the COVID Racial Data Tracker. Uh, Ibram, welcome. To start with, tell us what the, what the data tracker is trying to do. Well, first, it's, it's a collaboration between the COVID tracking project as well as my colleagues at the, the Anti-Racist Research and Policy Center. And we're seeking to collect, um, ingest, produce, make available racial data that's being released by states uh, all over this country. So about 30, more than 30 states have released data on either infection rates or death rates. And we want to collect that data and make it available to people, but then analyze it and then report it out, tell the story about what's happening in our country. Does it surprise you that that data hasn't really effectively been collected already? So it was surprising, certainly. At the beginning of this month, very few states had released any sort of racial demographic data on who was being infected and who was dying and even being hospitalized as a result of COVID-19. And so many people, and including myself, we started calling for that data. And, and as I stated, dozens of states has, have released it, but we want all states to release it, and we want every county to release it, and we want to really get a, a picture of who's most vulnerable, because it appears in, in many states, Black Americans in particular are dying at double the rate of their population. In other words, the percentage of the Black people who are, are dying are typically double their population percentage in many states. Why do you, Ibram, why do you think that is, and, and, and how do you think it needs to be addressed? Well, I think the most immediate reason is because black people are more likely to suffer from pre-existing conditions like heart disease and respiratory disease and asthma. But the reason, there's a series of uh, reasons why black people are more likely to, to suffer these pre-existing conditions. They're more likely to live in food deserts. They're more likely to live in trauma deserts. They're less likely to have access to high quality care. There's uh, studies of showing a relationship between racism and stress levels. So there's a series of reasons, and that's what we need to be studying, but we also need to be ensuring that this extremely vulnerable population is being protected and resources are being put forth to ensure uh, that they're receiving high quality, life-saving care. Your, your wife, Ibram, is a doctor working on the front lines right now. How, how have you been impacted by, by the virus? I mean, uh, I mean obviously, there, there are medical providers all over this country who, who are currently heroes. And, and my wife is, is one of them. She's an ER doctor in Washington at, at a children's hospital. And, and children's hospitals are now typically serving all over this country older people as as she is, she's taking care of COVID patients. I've had to watch her put on her personal protective equipment and, and take it off and worry about whether she's been infected and worry about her patients who she knows have been. But I've also watched as her hometown of Albany, Georgia in Southwest Georgia has become one of the outbreak zones yeah. for COVID-19, has one of the highest death rates uh, in, in the country and her parents still live there. And so she's received ports, reports of, of, of friends from high school and, and, and older people who are dying or who, who, um, who are suffering from this disease. And so it feels like an everyday thing for us. Yeah, well, it's really important this data gets related, uh, collected. There is no federal system to collect it. Ibram X. Kendi, thank you very much.